All right, this video is going to be short and to the point because there's almost no reason to make this video. So let's get straight into it. My recommended loadout for the day one Witch Queen raid is going to be Mountaintop, Recluse, and Anna. Wait, what year is it? Oh, right. We actually have some viable options in each slot and weapon type now. Maybe this video won't be as short as I thought. Let's start off with some primary weapons. The Ikelos SMG. Still one of my favorite primaries in the game. Solid at killing trash mobs, and the added benefit of creating war mine cells is a plus in my book. Fatebringer. In my opinion, this is one of the best kinetic hand cannons for PvE in the entire game. Palindrome. Just like Fatebringer in the kinetic slot, I feel like Palindrome is a solid energy hand cannon. Nightwatch. If a situation comes up where I feel the need to use a scout rifle, Nightwatch is up there with the best of them. This role is also a reward for doing the New Light quest, so if you don't have one, it's incredibly easy to get. Vouchsafe. This is my Nightwatch equivalent in the energy slot. It's not as good as Nightwatch, but it's close enough. Sacred Provenance. I'm not a massive fan of pulse rifles at the moment, but if I do feel like I need one, I'll be pulling out this guy. Moving on to special weapons. Succession. If you have a good roll, this is probably the best kinetic sniper in the game. Izumi. Izume? Uzumi? Whatever. This is my Succession counterpart. I don't think it's as good as Succession, but if I'm rocking a kinetic primary and need an energy sniper, this will be the one that I choose. Harden Hour Dust or Ignition Code. Kinetic breech loading grenade launchers with blinding nades. Did I say blinding nades? Blinding nades? It's all you need to know. Truth Teller. More blinding nades! But in the energy slot. Heritage. If any of the encounters are close quarters like in Deepstone Crypt, a decent shotgun might be good to have ready to go. Secondly, if a double slug situation presents itself, I can pair this with first in, last out. Deafening Whisper. The ad clear and spawn trapping capabilities this can pull off make it a solid choice all around. Think of Martyr's Retribution, but not Sunset. For heavy weapons, I obviously have to start off with half truths or the other half. The new Zoom Zoom Swords. Like most of the previous raids, there's probably going to be a jumping puzzle in this new one, so why not just skip it entirely with Eager Edge? Falling Guillotine. The OG D2 Spin to Win Sword. Still a top contender in the heavy slot. The Seventh Seraph Saw. That's a mouthful. I doubt I'll be using this, but if a situation calls for a heavy machine gun, I'll rock this for the added benefit of War Mine Cells. Royal Entry. Very solid burst damage rocket launcher with great rolls and built-in tracking. Zer even sold a good one not too long ago. And with the return of G-Horn, this rocket has the potential to get so much better. The only thing is the drop rate of this guy is incredibly low and seems to get lower each new season. Hezen's Vengeance. If you miss the Zer roll on Royal Entry, or if you're a victim of its low drop rates, odds are you probably have a decently rolled Hezen's. I'm just gonna say linear fusion rifles in general. Personally, I'm not bringing in one, mainly because I don't have one that stacks up against other weapons in the heavy slot. But if you happen to have a god roll reads regret, I'd recommend bringing that in. If not, I wouldn't worry about it. Let's talk exotic weapons. Izanagi's Burden. Still one of my favorite exotics in the entire Destiny franchise. Great at high burst damage, especially when paired with another weapon. Wither Horde. Add clear and spawn trapping extraordinaire. You can add tick damage to majors, champions, and bosses as well. Trinity Ghoul. Once you get Lightning Rod going, you're most likely clearing an entire wave of adds in just a few shots. Sleeper Simulant. After years of being a shell of its former self, Sleeper is finally putting up comparable numbers again. It's probably not the best in-slot weapon, but its buffs have put it up there. Lament. Sword go burr. Nuff said. Galahorn. I probably won't be using this weapon at all during the day one raid. If rockets happen to be the play, I'll be using either Royal Entry or Hezen's Vengeance. I view G-Horn as a support rocket launcher. Don't get me wrong, it's great, but it makes legendary rockets way better than it is itself. Anarchy still has a place as one of the top options for the heavy slot. The reason most people cast it aside was at the same time that it got nerfed, we also got Particle Deconstruction. Regardless of Anarchy's nerf or not, we were all going to be using fusions and linear fusions during Season of the Lost. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Anarchy's usage trend upwards. 
Xenophage. Like I said in my Vault of Glass video, this weapon sucks at everything it does. But if we come across another Oracle's type of situation, it won't be complete rubbish during an encounter like that. This gun should not be used as a boss DPS weapon. Divinity. Easy debuff and easier crits, with the added benefit of being able to stun overload champs if we do come across any in the new raid. Whisper of the Worm. Just like I said in my VOG video, it's not a day one unless Whisper is ready to go. Let's talk about the charge with light mods. Protective Light. At this point, you should be using it almost all the time. It's probably the most broken mod in the entire game. Taking Charge. In my opinion, this is the most consistent way to become charged with light. Charged Up. It costs two armor mod points to bring your max charge with light stacks up from two to three. Supercharged. A bit more expensive than charged up at 5, but this brings your max stacks up from 2 to 4. War Mine Cells. Just to clear this up, we are not worried about the nerf to War Mine Cell damage here. That's not why I'm using them. We're looking at the other utility they bring. War Mine's Protection. You take less damage from enemies that are near a War Mine Cell. Cellular Suppression. When you shoot a War Mine Cell, it sets off a blast that blinds enemies. Global Reach. Increases the distance of the blinding blast made from cellular suppression. Wrath of Rasputin. Solar splash damage can create war mine cells. Things like Firefly, Xenophage, Dragonfly on solar weapons, solar nades and supers, and even Explosive Head on a solar bow will all have the chance to create war mine cells. Elemental Wells. A lot of the elemental well mods are pretty damn good, but my issue is that I don't focus too much on mods that increase damage output, especially during a day one raid, even if it does stack with all the other usual suspects. I'd prefer to lean into survivability mods over damage output mods. My blunt view on it, I don't care how much damage is possible if we're not surviving well enough to even get to damage phase consistently. In my opinion, limited revives makes staying alive far more important than a possibility of a high damage output. And with that said, Well of Life. If Protective Light isn't the most broken mod in the game, then Well of Life is the most broken mod in the game. Picking up a solar elemental well gives you increased health regeneration. You literally become borderline unkillable. Elemental Charge. If you are leaning into elemental wells in your build, this will be your go-to for still getting the benefits of protective light. In my opinion, reserve mods on your chest armor are a waste of mod slots. I would much rather run resist mods instead of reserve mods every single day of the week. Instead of running reserve mods on your main chest piece, bring an extra chest piece with you that has your reserve mods on it. Before you rally to the flag, equip your reserve chest piece, then rally. Then swap back to your main chest piece that has your resist mods before you start the encounter. You'll keep the extra ammo you got from rallying with your reserve mods. Obviously all of these weapons and mods could be horrible during the day one. I mean, what do I know, right? We could get crazy mods again like Breach and Clear or Particle Deconstruction, or Bungie could nerf half of these weapons and mods into the ground. So nothing I say here should be considered gospel. It's just good to have some sort of plan going into the raid and adjust as we get closer to launch. Normally, this is where I'd say that I stream regularly on Twitch, and that I'll be live with my team's day one raid attempt, but I'm in the middle of moving across the country, and I don't know if I'll be live or not for the day one. Either way though, my Twitch link is down in the description, and you should totally drop me a follow, because it's super cool and very free. And with all of that out of the way, Laz, out.